In ASP.NET Core projects, the launch settings.json file lets you control how your app launches and runs during development. The launch settings.json file is located under the properties folder and is primarily used when running the application locally using your IDE or the .NET CLI. This file is not meant to be used in production environments. In this video, let's learn about launch settings.json file how to use them and what the different properties in them stand for. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. Let's head off into JetBrains Rider where I have a default ASP.NET Core project set up. Here you can see there is a properties folder and if we expand that, you can see there is the launch settings.json file. This file contains the IIS settings and also the different profiles that you can use to run this application. Each of these profiles has different configuration that sets up your application in specific ways. For example, the HTTP profile sets up the application URL to be 5001 and also sets the launch URL and the launch browser to be true. In addition to this, this also sets the ASP.NET Core environment and sets it to development. Now the HTTPS profile similarly sets this up to an HTTPS URL. The third option in here by default is the IIS Express option. Now in here it has similar properties. However, for the IIS Express, the URLs are set using the IIS settings which is set up as a different property on the launch settings.json. The IIS settings has the different properties on the application URL and also specifies the SSL port. Now this setting works in conjunction with this profile to provide the application URLs. Now in each of these settings, you can see there is a command name property, which is set to project for both HTTP and HTTPS. However, for the IIS Express, it's set to IIS Express. Now this tells the IDE or the command line that's using this profile to launch this specific profile on IIS Express. The command name of project, however, tells it to use the Kestrel web server, which is a cross-platform web server for ASP.NET Core. Now you can also navigate the schema property, which provides a schema for this JSON document. This lists out the different properties that you can set on these profiles and also settings objects. Now, if you navigate down to the command name, you can see this supports different properties, executable, project, IAS, Express, etc. We will see how to use a different one later in this video. Based on the IDE that you're using to develop, this uses these profiles to launch the application. Now, in JetBrains Rider, you can see here that this shows different configurations on the top when you are to launch the application. So you can see there is an HTTP option, the HTTPS, and also the IIS Express. Now, based on which option you select, it will be using the associated profile. So let's choose the HTTPS in this case and launch our application. Now, in this case, you can see that the application has launched on 7065 and 5001. So if we expand this profile, you can see those are the URLs that's configured on this specific profile. Now you can also switch to a different profile if you need and run that when you're launching your applications. The names that's used to list these profiles comes from the profile names that we have specified in this JSON file. So instead of HTTPS, I can also choose to name this as something different. So I can specify this as secure and this will start showing up inside the profiles here. So you can see that there is a profile secure which is now showing up. I've seen that these ones do not get automatically removed and you can manually remove them if required. However, if you clean up the temporary files that's created in your project folder and reopen the solution, it does get removed. So now you can see that I just have HTTP, IS Express and secure option and the HTTPS option is no longer listed here. So I did delete off all the other files that is automatically created by the IDE for this to happen. Now I can use secure to launch this. So I can do this either by selecting the button right from here or selecting the setting and then selecting the run or debug option. JetBrains IDE also provides an option to launch the profile right from within the file. So if I click the play button from here, it will launch this specific profile. So it gives me the option to debug or run this application. So let's say debug, and this is going to launch the application 
in debug mode using that specific profile. So you can see here that it launches in the same two URLs. Now, if I switch over to Visual Studio IDE, where I have the exact same project open. So if I navigate to the properties folder and navigate to launch settings, you can see the profiles in here as well. So I have these three profiles. HTTP, Secure, and IAS Express. Now to switch between these profiles, Visual Studio has an option right next to the play button, which lists these different profiles. So you can see there's HTTP, Secure, and IAS Express. So let's choose the Secure profile and launch this particular application in that profile. So now you can see this is again going to use that exact same profile and launch this application. So if I go into the output folder, you can see here that this is launched using those two URLs and that profile. You can also launch these profiles using the .NET command line. So if I switch over to my command line, I can use the .NET run and specify the launch profile. Now, if you want to see the commands for help, you can use the dash H, which is going to list all the properties that you can specify. So inside here, you can see there is a dash dash no launch profile to say not to attempt to use any launch profiles. Similarly, you can also use the dash dash launch profile to specify the launch profile. Or you can use the short form, which is dash LP. So in this case, if I was to use .NET run, and let's use dash LP and specify the profile name. So let's choose secure. This is going to use the secure profile and launch our application using that. So you can see the application has started in those two profiles. Now, if we don't specify any profile name if, and if we use the .NET run just like that, it's going to use the first profile inside that, which in this case is HTTP one, which is why it's launching on the 5001 URL. So you can see that the HTTP profile is configured for 5001. The other property that it specifies is the .NET run messages, which is set to true. This is to show the message that it is building when the application is launching. So if you come back here, you can see that this is showing this text building by default, which is coming from that specific property. So if I come back and change that in the profile, so let's say this as false. And let's run this again. So let's use it using the default profile. You can see the building message is no longer shown. This is why you would usually turn this on so you can get good feedback when you are running your applications. Now we can add more profiles to our launch settings.json as required. So let's say if we want to change any of these startup URLs or the default environment variables that gets assigned, you can create a new profile or modify the existing one. So let's see how we can create a new profile in here. So inside this, we have seen the command name as IIS Express and also the project. So let's see a different one. So let's say we need to run this application on a Linux machine. So right now I have my application running on a Windows machine, but let's say I want to test this on a Linux machine. Now Microsoft Windows supports the WSL2, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. So in on my machine, I have set up the Ubuntu version that I have installed from the Microsoft Store. If you want to learn more about WSL, check out the link below in the description. So let's create a new profile inside this. Let's call this as WSL profile and let's specify the settings inside this. So for this, we'll have to specify the command name. So for that, we'll have to use WSL2. Let's specify the other properties as similar. So let's specify launch browser, URL, et cetera. Let's, so let's copy both of these and specify it in here. So for the launch URL, let's specify a different port. So let's specify HTTP colon double slash local host, and let's specify 5005. Let's also defaultly launch the Swagger URL. Let's also specify the environment variables. So inside this, let's specify two of the environment variables. Now, since this is going to launch in a WSL, I'll need to specify the ASP.NET Core URLs so that it can launch on that specific URL. So let's specify ASP.NET Core underscore URLs property, and let's specify the exact same URL inside here. So let's launch this on the 5005 port. Now, if you're not sure about the ASP.NET Core URLs, I did a separate video on hosting URLs and the application startup URLs, which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below. Now let's also set the environments to be development. So let's copy and paste that specific setting. Now, if you want to launch a specific distribution, you can also specify that by specifying the 
distribution name property. But for now, let's leave this as blank. So it will choose one by default. Now that we have the profile configured, let's run this using the WSL profile. So let's go over and switch over to the WSL profile and let's run this. Now this is going to launch this application on the Windows subsystem for Linux on the distribution Ubuntu that I have by default installed and launch our application. So you can see here the application is launched on 5005. So if I switch over to the output window, you can see here that this is opening up the Windows subsystem for Linux and launching our application on there. Now you'll have to make sure that you have .NET etc. installed on that. If not, Visual Studio will prompt you to do that. Now to make sure that this is actually running on a Linux machine, so let's switch over to our program.cs and let's return back a different summary. So in this case, you can use the runtime information class to get the operating system. Let's use the interrupt services and let's specify the OS description in here. So in, instead of the summaries being randomly generated, I'm going to simply return that. So let's run this again using the WSL. Let's execute this. Let's say try it out and execute. And you can see here that this is saying Ubuntu 2204 LTS, which is the distribution that I have installed on my machine. Now, if I was to switch back to the command line and let's simply specify .NET run, which is going to launch it using the default profile that is on HTTP. So let's run this location and let's go to Swagger endpoint and let's run this application from that. Now, in this case, since that's running on Windows, it's going to return Microsoft Windows. Now, I have the same application running on a Windows machine and also on a Linux machine using two different profiles in launch settings.json. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.